Hello. Welcome back to my cozy little place here in the world. And it gets cozier when I do anything Zentangle. I'm learning so much about Zentangle in this. And, and that's what I'm trying to bring to you in this series is the things that I'm learning as I learn them. Because there is so much to learn. And I am finding also that it is just so much fun. I've been lately looking a lot in this book and also on some online other videos. There's not a whole lot on the Dingbats videos, but um, I get a lot out of this book. The book is by B Brian Crimmins, a certified Zentangle teacher. But um, what I want to bring, what I want to bring to the table today is the differences in in the zentangles um you know we we do doodling we do zentangles and dingbats there's so much that we do when we um when we zentangle the dingbats is a form of zentangle but it is used like this uh, like you see on the cover here there's a um, a thank you note, and here it says thanks, and then the dingbat is actually just a small, sometimes an individual, um, small zentangle just to, uh, just to make whatever you're doing pop. Give you an example is a lot, I'm sure a lot of you have seen in like in a, um, like in a book, like in a novel you the when you come to a new chapter in a novel you might look at the very first word the very first letter of the very first word might be done all fancy and then you go through read the whole chapter get to the next chapter and the very first letter of the very first word in the new chapter again is made differently with a different font and usually quite fancy you know for the um for the new, I should have hunted a book up to find, to show you. But the dingbats are used a lot in, um, a lot in, oh, what can I say? A lot in, like decorating envelopes or decorating, um, making dividers, like a divider. A silly thing that I thought of with dingbats is... I'm sure everybody has seen somebody with, or some of you might even have, what we call these days, 2020, a tramp stamp. And it is almost, it. they're usually very beautiful, but they're usually put on the small of your back, at the lower part of your back, and they call them a, a tramp stamp. Um, and I don't know why they call them that, but that's just what I've heard them to be called and I guess that separates your back from your butt I don't know but um and a lot of times you'll see those in a book in between ideas like there might be a paragraph with an idea and then that little tramp stamp and then another idea you know when one idea stops then another one starts and and they have that little dingbats in there now, dingbats, when they use it actually in print, they call it dingbats still, but with an S. Zentangle has changed it with, to a Z. And so that would be the Zentangle dingbats. Now, also, I want to tell you, too, um, a doodle. You know, we doodle a lot. Do I have a doodle here? We do a lot of doodling. Doodling is... This is a dingbats right here. Um, doodling is new intention and your mind just wanders. And anything might happen on your piece of paper when you're doodling. You might doodle some words. You might doodle some um, anything. You just might just keep making marks all over. You're just doodling. It's totally mindless. Now, a zentangle is mindful. You use concentration and you have a clear intention of what that zentangle is going to be 
this on this card is a Zentangle. I just made a whole background and this has got a name and I'm my name to that Zentangle has left me. But it is a Zentangle. I did just on that whole tag as a background and I will add, because I've been playing with cards, I'll add something on that. This one I Zentangled the whole back and this was two Zentangles. Okay, you know what? This is no longer just a Zentangle. This is now, because I colored it, it is Zentangle inspired art. And so then it is called, because I, I did the Zentangle, two different Zentangles. Um, be, but because I used color in it, it kind of puts it into another category. And now it is a ZIA. A ZIA is a Zentangle inspired art in which this tag is Zentanger, Zentangle inspired art because I put color to it. I added some uh, butterflies on it and I added a little word there and I, yeah, I glued some stuff onto there just to, you know, give that card a little bit more. Um, these, these two both are, um, these two both are, are um, dingbats. Both of these are. Just a little design. Or this actually on a corner. This is what we're going to do, a corner thing. Not like this. We're going to do it a little bit different. But I also want to say, too, that um, when you're doing any kind of a Zentangle, any kind of a Zentangle or a Zentangle-inspired art, you focus not on the complete item. You focus on the process you're going through to get the process you're going through to get to your finished stage, what you feel is finished. You, you, you concentrate and focus just on that process because now, and also, there are many certified Zentangle teachers out there that have made videos and they do their classes online and you can watch them free. It doesn't, you know, some do charge, but most of them are just free. You can watch them, but each, each teacher has their own, um, their own forms. Like, um, this is one that, oh, I was writing down the name of it, but I don't know where I wrote it. Okay. This is one that I was doing this morning. And the, I watched three different teachers teach this one, and each one taught it a different way. And so, and I still didn't do any shading or anything on this one because I, I just play so much. And then I opened my book and got squirrel. And so, <coughs> I'm going <coughs> to, I'm going to do a corner on this, um, I'm going to do a corner and I'm going to show you one way of doing uh, a ding, Zentangle dingbats. There are, like I say, many teachers many in, in, that'll teach you different ways, but they're all right because a Zentangle does not have a concrete image. And one, one thing, uh, example is like when we do the when we do the, um, let me see, let me get my book, I can't even remember things. When we did, I think one of the very, the very first one we did was a Knight's Bridge. That was the very first we did in the series. And like here, I did the curves, the lines were kind of curved. Now you can do them, some will teach it with the lines straight, so it's like a checkerboard. And so, but having it curved is one way, but it's still a Knight's Bridge. If you have the lines all straight, it's still a Knight's Bridge. And so, and that is just the way that particular teacher might teach it. And so, um, gosh, we've done a lot. We've done a lot. I love my book. I hope you all are keeping um, books or records of everything that you're learning because they're just all amazing. But, but yes, you're, so there is no wrong. So if you, if you change, 
your idea just a little bit, it's yours. It's yours and it stills entangle. You just change maybe the shape of it or something. But here's what I'm gonna do first today and quit running my mouth. Run my mouth like an overloaded washing machine. I'm gonna make a frame, but I'm gonna make it like a in the corner. I'm gonna make it in the corner of this tag. I've got to where I like to make um, I like to use my tags, make tags, use the tags to put my, um, and these are made out of a manila folder. These, not, these ones actually purchased me, but um, you can make this, this is the same as a manila folder, you know, the, the, um, the paper that it's made out of. But I like to do, work on my tags and then actually build a tag out of it that I can use as a bookmark or send it off as Happy Mail or something. But here, I'm going to do a triangle. And so I'm going to do a triangle. I'm going to kind of round the corners just a bit. And so it looks like this. And then I'm going to aura it. I can aura it inside or out. I'm going to aura this one inside. So it's like a frame then, because I want a little bit of that space on the outside. And now, and I don't even know when it showed this one, but it didn't show a name for it. So I'm just going to call it, um, when I post it, I'm just going to call it um, uh, Dingbats 1 or something. Dingbats Triangle. I don't know what I'll call it, but it'll... Um, so that I have to have, because there was no name to it where I saw this. It was just showed this is a dingbat. Okay, so now I'm going to make like some feathers or some grass leaves or something. And I'm going to kind of start in the middle with these leaves. But I'm going to go under the frame and come out the other side. And I'm going to make a few, a few of them. And they do not have to be in any particular way or, but I'm going to, I want mine to just kind of stick out all around, all, all, all around, but they're all going to go underneath that frame. And my hand is shaking like crazy today. I know it's because I just ate some of Jeffrey's birthday cake and I shouldn't have ate that. And I got that sugar rush going on. We decided, if you know what we decided, I, I started a new tradition today. Instead of saying happy birthday, because Jeffrey did not want a birthday party. So it's a happy new year. We decided, I decided, because I think this way, is that instead of wishing somebody a happy birthday, I'm going to wish them a happy new year because you're starting the first day of your new year. So I want them to be happy all year, not just for the day. Now you can say the birth giver, the birth giver, like Jeffrey's mother, I told her happy birthday because she gave birth to Jeffrey on this day 12 years ago. So, I said happy birthday to her. It's her birthday. But I made Jeffrey, well, I, his card, I instead of making a card, I made him a bookmark. I used one of these tags, and I decorated it up. And on the front, I made it all decorated. Not birthday stuff. It's got an elephant and some tickets. I don't know what all I put on there, but he loved it. And then I put a tassel on. He goes, oh, I needed a bookmark. And so, and he really liked it. And so, um... But I wrote on there, Happy New Year. And Papa wore his Happy New Year hat. And that's what we had was Happy New Year. And um, I think it's an awesome idea. I don't know. Maybe I'm losing my mind. But we said, I said, you know what I'm going to do after New Year's? I'm going to go after New Year's Day. I'm going to go to the store and buy all the Markdown Happy New Year stuff. So that I have birthday birthday embellishments 
for people's birthday because I'm going to do, I'm going to give people Happy New Year cards on, um, on their birthday because it's a new year for them. Do you see how I have all those grasses now just growing out? Leaves, whatever you want to call them. They're just growing out. And I didn't start at any one place. I just started in the middle here. And then I'm going to um, scoot your chair up so you can see this. Okay, now I'm just going to go in here. Now this is, I don't know if you call them leaves something, but these little circles, when you do these little circles, that's called tipple. I do know that one. That's one word. So I'm going and putting tipple in, in this area, in here. I'm just kind of going here and there, and every place where these little leaves are coming together, I'm just adding some little tipple in there to give it some, give it some something. So they're all connected then by this tipple. It almost makes me think of, you know, little frog eggs, you know, those, what do they call them, little frog eggs? And they're always in a, in a glump in the water, a glump of frog eggs. I guess they're called frog eggs. I don't know. And, um, but it looks like they're in the water, uh, all these little frog eggs before they turn into polywogs or tadpoles or whatever. I'll just put a couple here and there. And I'm not putting them on the outside. I'm only putting those the little tipples on the inside. And so then I love this. Now this is something you would put just on the corner of an envelope. If you have an envelope, you're going to send the envelope out. You would put a dingbat on the envelope. Or if you're making a note card, you can put your dingbats on the note card. And so just on the corner of something. So I guess what it is, it's just like a partial zentangle. And so, and then if you want to add some weight, a, a lot of things, you know, we, we like to add like a little bit of weight somewhere. And um, I might want to add just a little weight on this corner. And by, by adding weight, what you're doing is you're just he making that line a little bit heavy, a little heavier. And especially if you're, um, if your image doesn't look balanced and you add some weight onto it, it kind of balances that. And I think right here, I'm going to just put a little bit of weight on just two corners. And it's amazing how just that little bit of weight makes such a big difference. It just really makes a big difference. And so, and then I want to have every place where my little grass is growing, going underneath the actual frame, I'm going to just shade that grass just a little bit. I'm calling it grass. I don't know what it is actually. It makes me think that there's water in there somewhere. And then the frogs laid their eggs and there's frog eggs in there. And, and the, it just, that's just what it makes me think. But you know, you never know what these kind of things are going to make you think. You never know. And um, that's what is so soothing about any kind of Zentangles is you don't know what is going to happen. You don't know what you're going to think about. Drop my stump in the floor. I got to reach for it. Okay. Um, you don't know what, what is going to happen. And that's why it's journey. It's the journey, not the destination. Or like they said, it's the process, not the result. Um, and, and now if I, this now is a Zentangled Dingbats. This is a Zentangled Dingbats right here. It is done in the black and white. It has got no color to it, but if I wanted to add color to it, then that changes its description to what I said. What did I say? Z-I-A, a Zentangle Inspired Art, which, you know, not any big deal about that, but it's just what I learned is that the differences, you know, and so not anything that's going to be on the test. It's just 
And so there, I put a little bit of shading on there. And um, always some shading is just good, I think. I think so anyway. Maybe I want to shade all four, all four of those corners on the triangle, and there's only three corners. Yeah. So you got to figure, I'm almost done with my 71st year of life. And so I told Jeffrey, I said, well, welcome to the 13th year of your, he goes, oh, no, I'm only 12. I said, no, yeah, you're done with the 12th year of life. That's over. Today's the first day of your 13th year of life. He goes, oh, yeah, you're right. It is. And so, um, <laughs> yeah, I'm enjoying my 71st year of life. Almost, I'm almost ready to graduate from the 71st year of life. But what would we call, I'm sure there's a name for this, so I cannot name it. But let me look in my book again. It's right here. Um, once you have to line the weight. Look how some weight on your corners balance. Um, it doesn't give the name of what that actual that actual um, piece is. But see how they did on even on the on the um, of course there's probably prettier that no theirs is not prettier than mine. Why am I saying that? But see how they did that triangle? That's where I got this idea. It's from these images right here. But it doesn't give me a name. It's just a dingbat's frame. So that's what I'll write on the on the thing, on the doohickey, on the thingamajig. So so that's all I have for you today. I don't have a whole lot for you today. I'm going to work on this and make it into a tag because I've just been into making these tags now, playing with them, just making tags. This one doesn't have any zentangles on it, but it's a tag nonetheless. And this one here, I just made a background. And so, but I thought I'd like to make a whole bunch of tags like this. And then just get a book ring and put them all together. And it'd be like a book. It'd be like a book. Put a book ring in here and um, just put all my tags in there. I think that'd be a pretty cool book if you ask me for my own honest, humble opinion. And, and it's Sunday. It is Sunday, right? So now I've been getting into singing these hymns. Some people like the hymns and some don't, but that's okay. If you don't, you just turn off your computer right now go to the kitchen and find something to eat. But I'm going to, um, I always read something a little bit inspirational or something at the end of my videos. And, um, and, and, um, but s sometimes I just want to sing a song. You know, there are sometimes there is a song that I don't know, but I like to read um, just the, the words. And then I read the words and I think, wow, that is awesome. Let's see. I'll read, I'm going to sing this one here. My granddaughter did that. My granddaughter is now 27 years old, but she did this when she was like two that's still there, you know. I says, Katie, you don't write in books. And now look at me. I write in all kind of books. Tear pages out of books. Out of this book, though, I haven't. I might have taken a page or two out to use. But it would probably be a song that I don't, I don't really know. Okay, Living for Jesus. <clears throat> me, 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 me. Okay. Living for Jesus, a life that is true. Striving to please him in all that I do. Yielding allegiance, glad-hearted and free. This is the pathway of blessings for me. 
Oh, Jesus, Lord and Savior, I give myself to Thee. For Thou in Thine atonement did give Thyself for me. I own no other master, my heart shall be thy throne. My life I give henceforth to live, O Christ, for thee alone. Okay, that was Living for Jesus. And so, I love my book. This is my book. It's been through... It's been through a lot of damage over the years since it was brand new in 1972. But you can tell it's been well loved. It sits right there in my shelf. And I thank you all for hanging out with me. And and be sure, just keep doodling, keep untangling, keep arting, keep crafting. And, and, and yeah, do you some little um, dingbats. Just little dingbats. And if you, like I say, if you're doing a card, a tag, then you can con continue to decorate it. You can um, color it. You can do anything you please with this. I'm going to put some fescues and stuff on here to make it a little bit more fancy. Because I just decided I want to do some more fanciness. And I've only been sitting here for 20 minutes. So I can still sit for, uh, no, it's 26 minutes. So now I still have. 34 minutes, I can still sit there. I have to get up and move around. Okay, God bless you all. Thank you so much for coming. May God watch over you every step you take, every move you make, and I will see you on the next video. God bless.